Hi, I'm Carl Taylor and welcome to this week's photo breakdown. We're going to take a look at this shot and exactly how it was lit each individual light. I'm going to walk you through and we'll take a look at the lighting diagram. So let's take a look at the image a little bit more close up now and let's see if you can figure out how it was lit before we find out. So, do you guys have any ideas on the lighting in this image? Well, take a look at the image, absorb it, let's have a zoom in, zoom around, take a look at the lighting on the skin, around the set, around the overall image, and see if you can figure out how that shot was lit. Any ideas? Okay, let's take a look at the lighting diagram and walk through it in full. So starting with our red background, uh, you can see the wall in the background which we constructed in the studio as a mini set. It was just a single plain wall with a single sheet of red carpet in front of it. And then we brought in these various bits of furniture and props from antique stores and prop stores that we uh, rented for the shoot. In a previous episode of Photo Breakdown, I showed you another shot uh, that was using the same set but a different lighting setup and we created and controlled a dappled lighting look. So if you missed that particular video, you can find that on our channel. So let's continue on with this particular image and we have our model around about here. You can see she is some distance away from the set. And then we have our parts of our furniture, different bits of furniture coming into the background there. So we've got the one over on the left here, a low one here, and then that taller one on the right, which is shown there. And then we have this mirror. And that mirror you can see on the left there, that's a freestanding sort of antique looking mirror in the background. And then we have this chaise long, um, which you can see here, a little sofa in the background that you can see behind the model. And then our camera position round about here. And then our next item, and this is actually not a key light in this uh, instance. We used the fluter here, and the fluter is throwing a beam of light onto the background wall. And in the previous uh, example that we looked at um, in another photo breakdown, I used the fluter as the key light to create a hard sunlight look. Here, if we look at the shot, the fluter isn't the key light at all. It's actually just creating that beautiful vignetted glow on the background. So that glow of light you can see behind our model there, that is the Fresnel lens fluter. And remember, it's not just Broncolor that make a large Fresnel modifier. Profoto do one, Elinchrom do one, independent brands do them as well. They're basically Fresnel lens modifiers. That one is controlling that lovely, beautiful, soft gradation spotlight on the wall. And to avoid it hitting the um, sofa and um, cutting light onto that, I had to raise it up quite a bit higher and then shine it down onto the set. So that's that lovely glow of light on the wall in the background. The next light is this P70. And that's a P70 with a tight honeycomb grid. And that also creates a tight beam of light. In this instance, you can see it's just illuminating that corner of that piece of furniture over on that side. You can see the shadows going in the opposite direction. So that isn't from the lighting from the fluter because the fluter is coming in from camera right. So it can't be casting shadows to the right. It would be casting shadows to the left as it is doing for that vase of flowers there that you can see there. So that is another independent light here. And as I said, that was that light shining in here. The next important light is this strip box. And this strip box is coming in from behind our model and that's throwing a glow. And that is a 30 by 120 strip box throwing a glow of light towards our model. And obviously with it being a double diffuse soft box, it is going to be spreading the light out quite wide, but because it's a sort of vertical thinner format, it gives me more of an edge lighting to our model 
that you can see here. We could have used a P70, we could have used a gridded light, but it would have been more concentrated to a particular area of the body. I wanted that light to run down the model's neckline, jawline here, as you can see, down the whole length of the arm and down the legs and to the calf muscle there. So by using a tall, thin modifier, 120 centimeters vertically, that allowed me to throw that light down the edge of the model that you can see there. Then our next light is the large softbox. This is the 120 by 180 centimeter uh, softbox. It's one of the biggest softboxes in the Bron range, but again, most lighting brands, manufacturers, all make a large or very large softbox in their range that would be uh, equivalent in area, size, etc. Now that very large softbox allowed me to throw this very soft glow of light into our model that you can see here. And that is the main key light that's creating this beautiful soft lighting all the way down the left hand side of the face, down the body, down the side of the corset, and the hips and the legs there. Now, you can see deliberately that that softbox is at an angle to our model, not front on to the model. And the reason is that we wanna create some three dimensionality and form. We've got edge lighting from the right hand side coming from the back, and then we've got the softbox from the left. And this area here is basically our shadow area of light so that we get some three dimensionality, some structure and form in the shot. However, on its own, that would have been a little bit dark. So the final piece to the puzzle was this, a polyboard set in quite close here, and that polyboard is bouncing light back from our main key light softbox, and that is then filling in these shadows sufficiently with enough light and soft light as well, because it's a very large eight foot by four foot poly board. So it itself becomes a large soft light source. That's bouncing enough light back into those shadows to give me uh, some soft fill lighting in there as well. And that results in the overall look and feeling that we've got to the light that you can see there. And then finally, our camera angle of view was like so. So you can see we're just getting the mirror into the left hand side, the chaise long within the right hand side and the furniture there. And then all of our lighting is sort of falling out um, of the shot, not coming into my shot at all, all controlled at the right distance. Um, again, if you wanna see more on that shoot, watch the video, see how these things are done in real time. You can watch our live shows and many of our hundreds of lighting classes over on carltaylereducation.com. Thanks very much for watching.